President Biden really going to sit back and allow Netanyahu to launch a ground operation into Rafah, given the scale of the devastation that we have already seen? The people there literally have nowhere to go. How is the U.S. going to react and respond to this? Well, I think the president has made it clear that the United States doesn't approve of whatever military plans the Israel Defense Forces have come up with, which is why there's an Israeli delegation that's going to be traveling to Washington. But I'm afraid there's very little that the president of the United States, even a president who has stellar pro-Israel credentials, can do to restrain the Israelis at this point. The Israelis believe that they are fighting a fight for their survival and want to knock out the remaining Hamas battalions, which are in Rafah. So um, regardless of how the United States tries to shape the Israeli operation, it seems more than likely the Israelis are going to move into Rafah at some point. You really do get the sense that there is a growing rift between the U.S. and Israel on this. And to use the words of Jake Sullivan, only in the last 24 hours, he has said, and I quote, Israel has not presented us or the world with a plan for how or where they would safely move those civilians, let alone feed and house them and ensure basic access to basic things and ensure access to basic things like sanitation. So how do you expect this to unfold, particularly in the midst of Ramadan? What's likely to happen next year? Well, you're exactly right. There is no place for these people to go. I think that the, when, whereas we believed a week or so ago that a Rafa operation was imminent, it may in fact be after Ramadan. That doesn't change the fact that there are one and a half million Palestinians who uh, don't have uh, access to food and water and, medi and medication. And the Israelis just don't have a plan. They really, there is no place to put them given the devastation in the rest of the Gaza Strip. I suspect that's not necessarily going to deter the Israelis from conducting military operations. This is not just a question of Prime Minister Netanyahu. He actually has a significant amount of support, both within the war cabinet as well as the Israeli public, to undertake a significant military operations in Rafah to go after uh, the remainder of Hamas there. Do you expect uh, his uh, likely operation in Rafah to aid or assist in the uh, ceasefire and hostage release negotiations that also seem to be at a standstill? Wouldn't that just make it worse? Well, I think the Israelis believe that the threat of or actual military operations will help uh, them. They believe that that gives them leverage in the negotiations. Um, they have offered a six-week ceasefire in exchange for uh, 40 hostages. Up until this point, uh, the most recent rounds of negotiations, it has been Hamas that has been the real obstacle to getting a ceasefire. So the Israelis clearly believe that the more that they threaten a Rafah operation, the more that they continue to conduct operations in other parts of the Gaza Strip, they have the upper hand in the negotiation. So you don't expect to break through anytime soon? Well, uh, it's possible that uh, we will get a ceasefire. Um, we've uh, come very close before. But overall, it seems to me that both the Israelis and Hamas want to continue the fight. Um, and as a result, civilians will suffer. How concerned are you about a fresh wave of conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. Do you think this is uh, inevitable at this point as well, given the escalation that we've seen around the uh, operation in Rafah? I, I absolutely think that uh, we are going to see a major escalation on the northern uh, Israel's northern border. Um, as the Israelis move into Rafah, as they do more damage to Hamas, um, as uh, the uh, Israelis turn their attention to the fact that they have a significant threat on the north once they believe that they have Gaza well in hand. I think all of the restraints that both Hezbollah and Israel have currently faced will fall to the wayside and that there'll be uh, a very significant conflict there. Very significant. So can you expand on that? What, what do you think it would look like? Well, uh, I think that the Israelis will want to do everything possible to push 
uh, Hezbollah forces back north of the Latani River, about 18 miles north of the border, uh, in accordance with UN Security Council Resolution 1701, which brought a conflict in 2006 between Hezbollah and Israel to an end. I think that there is a major risk that Hezbollah will use some portion of its quite significant rocket and missile forces against Israel's population centers. This will be a very, very different type of conflict be, than the one that we're seeing unfold in the Gaza Strip. I will say, however, that the Israelis are likely to receive more support from the United States in a conflict be, with Hezbollah than they are currently uh, with their operations in the Gaza Strip. But this will be a devastating conflict on both sides uh, if, in, if I'm right that there is going to be a very significant uh, conflict uh, between Israel and Hezbollah.